we now consider scattering of a beam of particles by a scattering center which is assumed to be fixed. Let the direction of the incoming particles be taken as the z direction. As a result of the interaction between the incoming particles and the scattering center, the trajectory of the incoming particle can get deviated. And any direction can be represented in terms of the polar angle theta and the azimuthal angle phi. And we can consider a solid angle in a given direction given by theta and phi. And at a particular distance r from the scattering center, the area ds corresponding to the solid angle is given by r square d omega. Now we can think of the flux of the incoming particles and the number of particles that is scattered into an infinitesimally small solid angle in a direction theta and phi and describe quantities like the scattering cross section. Let n denote the flux of the incoming particles and it is defined as the number of incoming particles per unit area normal to the beam per unit time and it has dimensions of inverse area times inverse time. Now the number of particles that, is that are scattered into an infinitesimal solid angle d omega in a direction theta phi will be proportional to uh, the magnitude of d omega and can be written as a quantity n which depends upon theta and phi the direction times d omega and uh, so n theta phi d omega is the number of particles that is scattered into an infinitesimal solid angle d omega and this d omega uh, is given by sine theta d theta d phi and it has dimensions of inverse time. Now we can define a quantity called the differential scattering cross section which depends upon the direction theta and phi as, a, as following. Sigma theta phi is defined as n theta phi divided by the incoming flux n. Now since uh, small n has dimensions of inverse time and the flux has dimensions of inverse area times inverse time, the differential scattering cross section sigma has dimensions of inverse time divided by inverse area time times inverse time which is equal to dimensions of area. So differential scattering cross section has dimensions of area. And if we integrate the differential scattering cross section over the whole uh, the, or all directions then we will get the total scattering cross section sigma. Now, if the system of the beam and the scatterer has a symmetry such that sigma theta phi depends only on theta and not on phi, then the total scattering cross section sigma, which is defined as the integral over the solid angle of the differential scattering cross section, uh, which is equal to integral from 0 to 2 pi of d phi an integral from 0 to pi of d theta sine theta times sigma theta can now be written as 2 pi times this integral and that is because the integrand does not depend upon phi and this integral is simply 2 pi.
we now define a quantity called uh, the scattering amplitude and obtain its relation with the differential scattering cross section. Consider a scattering of a particle of mass m by a fixed scatterer. Now taking the scatterer to be at the origin of the coordinate systems, the interaction experienced by the particle uh, by the scatterer can be written as the potential V of R, where R is the coordinate of the particle, the incoming particle taken with respect to the origin of coordinates, uh, where it is assumed that the scatterer sits. Now the Schrodinger equation has the following form. Now psi r is the wave function. Now very far away from the scatterer, the potential becomes negligible. And therefore psi obeys a Schrodinger equation with v is equal to zero or v is a constant for that matter. So that is the free particle Schrodinger equation. Now thinking about the situation physically, very far away from the scatterer initially, the wave function representing the beam of incoming particles should have uh, a plane wave like form uh, that is moving along the moving in the positive z direction. And whereas uh, very far away from the scatterer, uh, after scattering, the wave function should be that of a, a radially outgoing scattered wave. Now, the incoming particle part of the solution far away from uh, the scattering center can be written as the plane wave e to the power ikz multiplied by a constant which can be fixed by the normalization. And the radially outgoing scattered wave is given as e to the power i k r by r multiplied by a factor that depends only on theta and phi. We call it theta phi multiplied by a constant a. Both these functional forms a e to the power i k z and f theta phi e to the power i k r by r times constant e satisfy the free particle radial equation. So these are the solutions of the Schrodinger equation very far away from the scattering center where the interaction potential is zero. Now this represents the incoming beam of particles and this represents the particles that are going away from the scattering center after scattering. So asymptotically, that is when the radial distance from the scattering center is very, very large, the wave function has the form a times e to the power ikz representing the incoming beam of particles and uh, f of theta phi times e to the power i k r by r representing the radially outgoing wave uh, particle after scattering. Now this quantity f theta phi is called the scattering amplitude. It represents the amplitude of the radially outgoing scattered wave and is related to the di uh, differential scattering cross section. The probability current density corresponding to a wave function psi is given by the formula j equals i h bar by 2 m times psi gradient psi star minus psi star gradient psi. Now the flux of the incoming particle will be proportional to this current with the wave function psi corresponding to the incoming particles which we have already seen as the form a times e to the power ikz 
So to calculate the flux of the incoming particles, we will only use the part of the wave function that represents the incoming particles. And similarly, to find uh, the number of particles that are being scattered into unit solid angle, we need to find out the current corresponding to the scattered wave and that is obtained by using this formula with psi replaced by psi out which correspond to the, wave, the part of the wave function representing the scattered wave. And as we have seen already, this is given by A e to the power i k r by r times f theta phi. So, the incoming particle uh, current density, if it is given by J, now that will of course depend upon this factor A, which is the constant multiplying the plane wave that is moving in the positive Z direction. And we can fix this A in such a way that this current density derived from that part of the wave function correspond to the incoming flux of particles. So A will be fixed by the condition that J is equal to the flux which has a magnitude equal to N and the direction is along Z. So doing that we have N Z equal to J when psi is equal to a e to the power i k z and substituting uh, psi equal to a e to the power i k z in this formula and replacing j by n times uh, the unit vector z we get this and doing the calculation and rearranging we get n is equal to h bar k by m the mod square of a now for the scattered wave, we can do a similar calculation to find out the outgoing current density which is given by ih bar by 2m times psi out gradient psi star out and minus psi star out gradient psi out where psi out is the radially outward scattered wave given by this expression. So this scattered wave is moving radially outwards in a particular direction theta and phi and the number of particles that is scattered into a solid angle uh, say d omega is given by uh, you know at a particular distance r away from the scattering center and all this particle has to go through and uh, area of cross section ds which is given by r square times d omega and the number of particles that is flowing through an area ds per unit time is given by j out dot ds now this area is normal to the radial vector and therefore we can write ds as r cap times ds where ds has magnitude r square d omega and d omega can be written yeah, as uh, sine theta d theta d phi. So the number of particles that are scattered in direction theta phi into a solid angle d omega is simply given by j out dot ds theta phi. Now ds theta phi is simply r cap times ds theta phi as I have written here. Now, that has magnitude equal to r square times d omega. Therefore, n theta phi d omega is, so this is 
r cap dot j out times ds is r square d omega. So we get this formula. So cancelling this factor of d omega on either side of the equation, we get m theta phi is equal to r dot j out r square. So we now need to find out an expression for j out in terms of the scattering amplitude. Now we can use the spherical polar coordinates to compute j out. So gradient operator in spherical polar coordinates is r cap times d by dr plus theta cap times 1 by r d by d theta and phi cap times 1 by r sine theta d by d phi. And r dot gradient operator is simply d by dr. Now coming back to uh, the computation of n theta phi, we have r square, that is this r square, i h bar by 2m, that is coming from the definition of j out. Okay. Then r dot gradient psi star out minus psi star out r dot gradient psi out. So in the calculation we need this quantity r dot gradient. That's what we have written here. Now r dot d out, r dot gradient is simply d by dr. So substituting that over here we get the equation 4.0. Now we can compute d by dr of psi out uh, with psi out given by a e to the power i k r by r times f of theta phi. Substituting that over here, we will get equation 4.64 uh, d by dr of psi out. And taking the complex conjugate, we will get d by dr of psi star out as well. Now substituting uh, for psi out over here, the expression for uh, n theta phi simplifies to h bar k by m a mod square times the mod square of the scattering amplitude f. Now, the differential scattering cross section sigma theta phi is simply n theta phi divided by n. So substituting for n theta phi that we have calculated earlier, so we have h bar k by m times a mod square times f mod square divided by n, which is h bar k by m times a mod square. So a mod square gets cancelled, h bar k by m gets cancelled and we find the result and the differential scattering cross section sigma theta phi is the mod square of the scattering amplitude f. We now consider scattering by spherically symmetric potentials. Uh, these are potentials where v of r is simply a function of the radial distance only does not depend upon theta and phi. Now, uh, the plane wave representing the incoming particles is given by e to the power i k z and in spherical polar coordinates where the z axis is taken to be the direction of the incoming particles, we can write z is equal to r cos theta and e to the power i k z becomes e to the power i k r cos theta. And this can be expanded in Legendre polynomials PL cos theta and is given by equation 5.2. So e to the power i k r cos theta equals sum over L running from 0 to infinity i to the power L 2L plus 1 JL of k r PL cos theta. Now JL k r are the spherical Bessel functions. Now we also note that the 
Legendre polynomials, PL cos theta, are eigenfunctions of the angular momentum operators L square and LZ, in with the eigenvalue equations given as L square acting on PL cos theta is H bar square L into L plus 1 times PL cos theta and LZ acting on PL cos theta is 0. We now consider a technique that is useful for uh, studies of scattering by spherically symmetric potentials and is called partial wave analysis. So a wave function when it is written as a series in terms of the spherical, uh, the Legendre polynomials, the term corresponding to each L is called a partial wave. That is, if the wave function is given by e to the power i k z, the lth partial wave is given by i to the power l 2l plus 1 j l k r times p l cos theta. So e to the power i k z is actually a sum of partial waves of uh, l running from 0 to infinity. Now in spherical polar coordinates, the Hamiltonian of the system of the incoming particle and the scatterer, which is assumed to be at the origin of coordinates, uh, can be written as minus h bar square by 2m, 1 by r square d by dr, r square d by dr, plus l square by 2m r square plus v of r acting on psi r theta phi equals the energy E times psi r theta phi. Now considering the symmetry of the problem where an incoming particle is moving towards the scatterer in the positive z direction and the polar angle is given by theta and the scatterer is at the origin of coordinates and we can see that the potential depends only on r and not on theta and phi and therefore uh, the, the direction in which the particle is scattered or the number of particles in which the particle is scattered should be independent of the azimuthal angle phi, uh, azimuthal angle phi. because uh, each value of phi is equally probable and therefore uh, the wave function that correspond to the solution of the Schrodinger equation should be independent of phi. So we can write psi r theta phi uh, is separated in terms of the radial uh, distance r, radial coordinate r and the polar angle theta as rl r times pl cos theta and substituting that in the Schrodinger equation and using equation 5.3 which correspond to the action of L square on PL cos theta, the Schrodinger equation becomes minus h bar square by 2m 1 by r square d by dr r square d by dr then L square by 2m r square acting on this uh, wave function of this form that is RLR times PL cos theta simply becomes h bar square times L into L plus 1 by 2m r square plus V of r um, acting on RLR times PL cos theta and that should be equal to E times RLR PL cos theta. By cancelling the factors of PL cos theta we finally arrive at the equation uh, given by equation 6.3. So this is one solution which is independent of phi of course and correspond to a particular value of L and a most general solution which is independent of phi will be a linear combination an arbitrary linear combination of uh, 
solutions of this type and can be written as sum over L running from 0 to infinity RLR times PL cos theta. Now we consider regions that are far away from the scatterer so that the potential is equal to 0 and also the factor L into L plus 1 by R square also becomes 0. That is R tend to infinity, this factor becomes 0 for any finite value of L. So we consider a region very far away from the scatterer where the potential V of R is 0 and this factor L into L plus 1 by R square and can also be neglected. So in that case, this equation 6.3 now becomes 1 by r square d by dr, r square dr by dr plus k square times capital R equal to 0, where k square is in, defined as 2me by h bar square from here. Vr is 0 and this factor is 0. The only other factor remaining from the square brackets is 2me by h bar square times RLR. And we call 2me by h bar square k square. Now writing r of r equals chi of r by r. This equation further simplifies to d square chi by dr square plus k square chi is equal to 0, which are solutions a e to the power i k r plus b e to the power minus i k r. Now the outgoing wave solution is represented by a e to the power i k r. So if chi is equal to this, then r of r is chi of r divided by r is a e to the power i k r by r. Now a is independent of r but can depend upon theta and phi. And we can write the general solution psi r theta phi in that case as a function that depends upon, uh, so this will be like uh, p l cos theta times a times e to the power i k r, which we may write as f of theta phi times e to the power i k r by r. And this is what we have claimed earlier. We now consider potentials uh, that has a finite range, for example, where these potentials dk to 0 faster than 1 by r square so that there exists a region which is very far away from uh, the scattering center where the potential is negligible but uh, the uh, the factor l into l plus 1 by r square is still significant so that we can neglect v of r there but not l into l plus 1 by r square In that case, the Schrodinger equation, the radial part of the Schrodinger equation has the following form with L into L plus 1 by R square term retained. Now using a variable transformation, x is equal to kr and writing r of r as r tilde of x. Since x is equal to kr, we can write it as r tilde of kr equation this equation now gets transformed to this equation and the solutions of these equations are the spherical Bessel functions and spherical Neumann functions of order L. So in general a general solution for a particular value of L can be written as a linear combination of the spherical Bessel function JLx and the spherical Neumann function NLx. Now representing x in terms of R, we have RLr is equal to R tilde L of Kr, R tilde L of x which is R tilde L of Kr which is a linear combination of the spherical Bessel function which is JL KR with a coefficient A dash L plus 
n l k r Neumann function with a coefficient b dash l. Now these coefficients need to be fixed by using boundary conditions and normalization. The asymptotic properties of the spherical Bessel functions and Neumann functions are given by j l as x tend to infinity goes like 1 by x times sine of x minus l pi by 2. And the spherical Neumann function as x tend to infinity goes like minus 1 by x times cosine of x minus l pi by 2. So the asymptotic form of this radial function RLR can be obtained by taking R tend to infinity limit of this solution. So that is given by A dash L J L K R tend to infinity plus B dash L N L K R tend to infinity. Now using the asymptotic form of J L and N L we have A L dash sin K R minus L pi by 2 by K R minus because N L as K R tend to infinity is given by minus 1 by K R post K R minus L pi by 2. So substituting that over here and writing A dash L as A L cof delta L and B dash L as minus A L sin delta L which we can always do writing A dash L and B dash L in terms of two other parameters A L and delta L. We get the asymptotic form of the radial solution R L R as a l sin k r minus l pi by 2 plus delta l by k r. Now this quantity delta l is called the phase shift of the lth partial wave because of the scattering. So it corresponds to the phase shift introduced by the scattering potential v r in the asymptotic form of the radial wave function. So if the scatterer was not there, the solution will be similar but not without the delta L. To see this, we can write the solution 8.5 in the following way. RLR is equal to AL cof delta L JL KR minus sin delta L ENL KR and which is obtained by writing a dash l equal to a a, a dash l is equal to a l cof delta l and b dash l is equal to minus a l sin delta l. In the absence of scattering, that is when V of R is equal to 0, this solution should be valid for all values of R because equation 9.2 is a solution of the radial part of the wave function in a region where V of R can be neglected but we cannot neglect L into L plus 1 by R square. Now if the scatterer was not there, VR would be uh, 0 everywhere for all values of r and therefore this solution should be valid for all values of r even when r tend to 0. So that means k of r tend to 0. To find the asymptotic form of this solution as r tend to 0, we can use the asymptotic form of the spherical Bessel function and the spherical Neumann function. So j l as x tend to 0 goes like x to the power l by 2L plus 1 double factorial and, and the spherical Neumann function as x tend to 0 goes like minus of 2L minus 1 double factorial divided by x to the power L plus 1. Now as we can see as x tend to 0 Neumann function diverges and therefore uh, this cannot represent a normalizable wave function. Enable. 
a wave function that has finite value at x is equal to 0. And therefore, uh, this part will be 0. And RLR should have the form given by AL cos delta L JL KR as R tend to 0. And which we can replace using the asymptotic form of JL given by this equation. When we do that, uh, we have as RL tend to 0, the solution should have the form A dash L sin KR minus L pi by 2 by KR. And comparing this equation 9.4 with 9.1 we see that the solution the asymptotic form of the solution corresponding to the uh, uh, so when this scatterer was present is shifted in phase by a factor of delta l from the solution uh, when the scatterer was not present and therefore this factor delta l can be identified as the phase shift introduced by the scatter, the scattering potential. <laughs> we now find out the scattering amplitude from the asymptotic form of the solution that we obtained over here. The general solution corresponding to the scattered wave can now be written as as r tend to infinity psi r theta phi is the sum of uh, the solutions corresponding to this radial function multiplied by pl cos theta and summed over all possible values of l. So that will give us sum over L running from 0 to infinity AL sin KR minus L pi by 2 plus delta L by KR times the Lachandre polynomials PL cos theta. But the asymptotic solution is expected to have the form e to the power i k z plus f of theta times e to the power i k r by r where this factor correspond to, correspond to the incoming particle and this correspond to the outgoing scattered particle. So this should be equal to this. So e to the power ikz plus f of theta times e to the power ikr by r should be equal to sum over l equal to 0 to infinity and, and this factor. Now here uh, we have replaced f of theta by f of theta because we have assumed that the potential is spherically symmetric and the incoming particle is in the z direction and therefore there is a symmetry about phi and therefore the wave function as well as the, uh, the scattering amplitude f is independent of phi and therefore we can write f of theta phi as f of theta. And the normalization constant that would have appeared here can now be absorbed into this factors AL. Now we can use the partial wave expansion of e to the power ikz and then write the factors of sin x wherever it appears as e to the power i x minus e to the power minus i x by 2 i. This equation can be expanded as follows. So e to the power i k z has uh, the expansion, the partial wave expansion given by 
uh, this. Now, since this correspond to R tend to infinity solutions, the asymptotic solution, we should replace JL by its asymptotic form as R tend to infinity, which is given by sine KR minus L pi by 2 by KR. Now, plus F theta e to the power i kr by r, the radially outgoing scattered wave, should be equal to and this factor. Now, we replace the factors of sine using this formula. And we get an equation like this. Now, we can uh, consider the coefficients of e to the power minus i kr on either side of this equation and they both should be equal. So, substituting or equating the coefficients of e to the power minus i k r on either side of this equation, we get the following equation. Because over here in equation 10.3, the coefficient of e to the power minus i k r on the left hand side is coming from this term. So, that has a factor minus e to the power i l pi by 2 times p l cos theta times 2 l plus 1 times i l. And that is what we have written here. And on the right hand side, we again have this minus sign, but we have a factor of a l e to the power i l pi by 2, e to the power minus i delta l divided by 2 i k r times p l cos theta. So, that is over here. Now, the Legendre functions p l cos theta are orthogonal and therefore their coefficient uh, on either side of an equation should be equal. So, that means this should be equal to this. Now, cancelling out the common factors, we will get AL equal to I to the power L 2L plus 1 E to the power I delta L. We can now go back to equation 10.3 and equate the coefficients of e to the power i k r. So, we will have one term coming from this factor on the left hand side and on the right hand side we will have a term coming from this factor. But in addition we have one more term. On the left hand side we have an e to the power i k r corresponding to the scattered wave. So, putting all together, all of them together we will get this equation. But now, we know that e to the power minus i l pi by 2, this quantity is equal to e to the power minus i pi by 2 to the power or maybe i pi by 2 to the power minus l, but e to the power i pi by 2 is i. So, this is equal to i to the power minus l. And similarly, over here, this is also e to the power minus i l. But now, we can write a l as i to the power l 2 l plus 1 times e to the power i delta l. So, we will have e to i l 2 l plus 1 e to the power i delta l. And then this factor is i to the power minus l and then e to the power i delta l. So, this term together becomes 2L plus 1 e to the power I2 delta L. Now, taking this term to the right, we will have this F of theta as sum over L running from 0 to infinity 2L plus 1 e to the power I2 delta L coming from this one minus 1 and that is coming from this factor by 2 i k times p l cos theta. Now, this factor of 
e to the power i2 delta l minus 1 can be written as e to the power i delta l times e to the power i delta l minus e to the power minus i delta l which is equal to e to the power i delta l times 2i sin delta l. Then uh, the scattering amplitude f of theta becomes this factor of 1 by k. This 2i gets cancelled with this 2i. Then this factor of 2l plus 1 e to the power i delta l pl cos theta and then this sine delta l appears over here. So we have obtained an expression for the scattering amplitude in terms of the Now the differential scattering cross section is equal to the mod square of the scattering amplitude. So taking the mod square of this we will get 1 by k square then sum over L running from 0 to infinity, L dash running from 0 to infinity and 2L plus 1 times 2L dash plus 1 e to the power i of delta L minus delta L dash that the factors of sine, sine delta L times sine delta L dash then the Legendre polynomial is PL cos theta times PL dash cos theta. Now the total scattering cross section is computed as 2 pi times integral 0 to pi d theta sin theta d theta sigma theta because uh, sigma theta phi is independent of phi. Now substituting for sigma theta from equation 11.4 we can arrange the factors in such a way that the integral over theta appears only over this factor so integral from 0 to pi d theta sin theta pl cos theta pl dash cos theta now substituting x is equal to cos theta this simply becomes integral from minus 1 to 1 dx pl x pl dash x but this is simply the a normalization integral for the Legendre polynomials and this gives 2 times 2 by 2L plus 1 times the Kronecker delta L L dash. Substituting that over here, the summation over delta L L dash replaces all L by uh, L and we get the final result sigma is equal to 4 pi by k square sum over l is equal to 0 to infinity 2 l plus 1 sine square delta l. So now we see that the total scattering cross section has no interference effect between terms of different values of l. So this looks like a sum of contributions from each of the individual partial waves. Now a partial wave with L is equal to 0 is called an S wave, L equal to 1 is called a P wave, L is equal to 2 is called a D wave and so on. So now let us explicitly write down the contribution from uh, the S wave scattering. So we only consider L is equal to 0. So in that case from this formula this will become, uh, sorry not this formula. From this formula, we only consider L is equal to 0. So in that case, L and L dash should be 0. So this is equal to 1 by k square. These factors will become 1. Then since uh, uh, this factor become i delta 0 minus delta 0, which is e to the power i 0 equal to 1. And uh, sine delta 0 and sine delta 0 here. So sine square delta 0. Then PL of cos theta. Now, so this become P0 cos theta and P0 cos theta. Now P0 of x is equal to 1 and therefore these factors become 1 and we will get the result 1 by k square P0 square cos theta sine square delta 0. Now P square 
cos theta is simply 1 because p0 cos theta is 1. So we get sin square delta by k delta 0 by k square. Now the total cross section, scattering cross section from S wave scattering is simply the integral of sigma 0 theta over theta. And that integral is simple because this factor is independent of theta and that gives 4 pi k square times sin square delta 0. Now we can consider the L is equal to 0 and L is equal to 1 terms, the S and P waves. And sub, uh, considering terms corresponding to L equal to 0, L dash equal to 0 and L equal to 0, sorry L is equal to 0 and L equal to 1 and L dash equal to 0 and L dash is equal to 1, we can write down sigma theta as this uh, long expression and whenever we have a p0 of cos theta we can replace it by 1 and p1 of cos theta we can replace it by cos theta and simplifying it we will get this expression so the differential scattering cross section when we consider only uh, say L is equal to 0 and L is equal to 1 partial waves contains terms uh, that uh, co uh, corresponds to interference between uh, two partial waves. So this term over here is a product of sine delta 0 and sine delta 1. So a contribution from L is equal to 0 partial wave and uh, L is equal to 1 partial wave. Now, if we compute the total scattering cross section though, this is an integral over d theta running from 0 to pi sin theta sigma theta, we see that this factor, the interference term, which has a dependence of cos theta over here, integrates to 0. Whereas this factor and this factor gives finite values. And the final result will be 4 pi by k square sin square delta 0 plus 3 sin square delta. From which we see that uh, the total scattering cross section does not contain any interference terms. Whereas the differential scattering cross section contains interference terms. We now consider the optical theorem. The expression for the scattering amplitude is given by this. And if we write theta by 0, we have cos theta equal to 1. And PL of 1 is equal to 1. And therefore, f of 0 becomes 1 by k sum over L 2L plus 1 e to the power i delta L sin delta L. Now, if we take the imaginary part of F0, we see that uh, k is real, 2L plus 1 is real sin delta L is real and only exponential I delta L is complex. So we just need to take the, real, the imaginary part of uh, e to the power I delta L which is simply sin delta L and then imaginary of f of 0 becomes 1 by k times sum over L 2L plus 1 sin square delta. Now going back to the expression for the total scattering cross section we have sigma is equal to 4 pi by k square times sum over L is equal to 0 to infinity 2L plus 1 sin square delta. Now 1 by k square sum over L 2L plus 1 sin square delta L was seen just now to be equal to imaginary of f of 0. And therefore we can write sigma as 4 pi times imaginary of 
the scattering amplitude. For, sorry, the factor of K also is there. Over here, there is a 1, one by K square, whereas 1 by K times sum over L 2L plus 1 sine square delta L is imaginary F of 0. And therefore, sigma, the scattering cross-section is equal to 4 pi by K times imaginary of F of 0. And then this equation is called the optical theorem. 